Hi, and welcome to my OCRA A-Level Biology Revision Session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at the xylem and the phloem tissue. So let's start off with the xylem then. Now, it's important to note that when I talk about the xylem, I'm talking about a tissue. So we have cells that are grouped together to form a tissue. So the xylem tissue is composed of dead cells. So these cells are not living, they are dead, therefore they do not contain a nucleus, they do not have the genetic material that allows them to perform some of the metabolic processes necessary like protein synthesis, respiration, any of that. So therefore we call this dead cells and they're arranged in end to end. Now, what that means is they form this really long, hollow tube. So a bit like a straw. If you think about a straw, a straw is just a long, hollow tube. And therefore, only thing that is present is the outside of the straw. Well, the xylem vessel is the same. What we have is that all these cells have been connected to form this long, hollow tube. And they are perforated by an end plate. Now, that end plate allows for the movement of water and mineral ions to make their way up through the xylem vessel. Before the cells actually died, what the cell needed to do to ensure that the xylem vessel was strengthened is they had to thicken their cell walls. So remember, plant cells have a cell wall which is made up of cellulose. That is all cell walls, but what the plant actually does in the xylem vessel is it thickens this wall with a polysaccharide called lignin. Now that polysaccharide is going to ensure that that xylem vessel stays open and does not collapse. So it ensures that the flow of water can continue up through the plant. Now alongside the xylem vessels, what we also have are these xylem parenchyma. So xylem parenchyma are little cells that are surrounding the xylem vessel which are there to store food and also store tannin deposits. So when you look at plant responses this is a bitter tasting chemical which is going to prevent or deter the herbivores from feeding on the plant. So it's a protective mechanism and also the xylem parenchyma are going to need to store the food. Remember these are cells. These are cells that are going to require the storage of macromolecules so that they can perform respiration to allow for the metabolic processes. So the xylem vessel itself is a dead cell. It's tissue that's made up of dead cells, whereas the xylem parenchyma have not yet got to the point where they have matured to become the xylem tissue. So the other thing to note is not only does the xylem parenchyma store the food and the tannin deposits, it needs a way of getting that substance to it and therefore the xylem is actually bordered with these pits. Now what that allows is that allows for lateral water movement. Our cells are made up of cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a liquid and therefore the water needs to move across to the cells providing the mineral ions that may be necessary for the cell to perform its function. So how do we know what the xylem vessel looks like? How can we observe it? So one of the practical skills that you are expected to know is that if you were to take a plant that has a flower or some leaves above, so you can do this with celery, you can do this as you see here, I did it with daffodils. What you do is you place the plant in water containing these dyes. Now I used red and I used a blue colored dye. And what I then did is I left it. Now I had to leave it a good two to three hours before the dye was able to move up. Now normally you would leave it for about 24 hours. And what it means is that when you actually take either a transverse or longitudinal section, so when you use a very sharp blade and you cut through the stem 
of the plant that you're observing, what you should see is you should see that as the water has been pulled up through the xylem vessel, it has taken the dye with it. And because of that, the dye will be deposited and it will stain the section that you're looking for. So it's important to note that when you do this type of practical, that you have to think about the precautions. You're going to need to use a sharp blade. So therefore you need to be careful that you do not cut yourself. You really want to have very thin sections that you are cutting so that you are able to observe them, that the light can penetrate. Now I was using a microscope which was looking from above which was connected to a computer so I could only zoom in so much whereas if you were going to be doing this your section would want to be very very thin to allow the light to penetrate through so that you could observe the different sections. So if we move on then and we start to look at the phloem, so the vascular bundle is always made up of the phloem and the xylem and there are some similarities but there's also some differences. So one of the key things that we have here is with the phloem, the phloem is the vessel that is going to be transporting the food molecules for the plant. So things like the sugars, the sucrose, and the amino acids. So if you haven't checked out my translocation video, then please do check that one out. But what we want to understand is that our cells are actually connected together, but they are perforated by the sieve plate. So this cell wall has been perforated and we call that the sieve plates. But the column of these specialized sieve tube cells is actually called the sieve tube element. So that's the name you want to give when you are talking about the phloem. So the phloem is made up of these sieve tube elements, these columns of specialized cells. Because we're talking about a tissue, we therefore need to ensure that we're talking about sieve tube cells. Now the difference between the phloem to the xylem is that the phloem is living. It's not dead like the xylem vessel was however it is living it has reduced its cytoplasm it does not have a nucleus or organelles so what is it that makes it living well the fact that it's living is because it has these companion cells associated with it so all around the phloem vessel you have these companion cells now those companion cells have got the nucleus therefore they have the genetic information that is necessary for the metabolic functions they have the mitochondria necessary for atp synthesis so because the phloem has these companion cells which are connected by these plasmodesmata, it means that the phloem vessel is classed as being living. So the phloem vessel is living, whereas the xylem vessel is dead. The phloem vessel has got these sieve plates, these perforated cell walls, whereas the xylem vessel has got these perforated end walls. So it's important that you note the similarities but also the differences because that's what they'll be looking for in these exam questions. And if I were you, I would be writing it in a table or with connective sentences. This one has this, whereas that one has that. So the xylem vessel has the bordered pits, whereas the phloem vessel does not. The phloem vessel has the sieve plates, whereas the xylem vessel does not. The phloem vessel is living, whereas the xylem vessel is made of dead cells. So what does it actually look like in different places, this vascular bundle within the plant? Now, they love throwing an electron micrograph at you and they expect you to know how to label which one's the xylem and which one's the phloem. So the way I look at it and how it helps me is I always think of inside the root, it, the xylem looks like an X. So therefore, if I look for the area inside the middle that kind of gives me an X shape, that's my xylem vessel. Also, I can also know where is the larger hollow tube. So if I've got a larger hollow tube, a large whole section there then I can use that to identify my xylem so in my picture I can see that my m is 
labelling my xylem vessel. Then around the xylem vessel, very close, you have what's known as your phloem. So the phloem is always very close to the xylem vessel. And in between the phloem and the xylem vessel, what you actually have are merry stem cells, the cambium. And what the cambium can do is they are undifferentiated cells that have the capacity to go through mitotic division and then differentiate into either the phloem or the xylem. So as we move away from the root and as we move into the stem, what you start to see is the location of the vascular bundle is no longer in the center as it was in the root, it's now towards the outside. However, the xylem is always located in my vascular bundle, in the inside of the stem. So therefore towards the middle. So when we look at my xylem vessel in my vascular bundle, I can see that it is always located on the inside and the phloem vessel is always located on the outside closest to the edge of the stem. Now in between that xylem and the phloem is where you find your cambium and that cambium is filled with those merry stem cells. So I've tried to identify that with my red line going all the way around to distinguish between my xylem vessel which is the blue colored section, my phloem vessel which is the lilac section and then the cambium is in between. Again, if you're looking at an electron micrograph, then do make sure you look for the one that's got the bigger hole, that is the xylem. The smaller ones underneath, that would be the phloem. And then you can look at the leaf. And if we're looking at the leaf, what we tend to find, again, look for the size of the holes, but the xylem vessel is always at the top section of the vascular bundle in the leaf. That's because that xylem vessel needs to be closest to the palisade mesophyll layer. And that therefore means, because the palisade mesophyll layer is the place where the most photosynthesis occurs, that's providing the necessary mineral and water molecules for photosynthesis to occur. So that's how I remember that the xylem is at the top because we want photosynthesis happening mainly at the top. The water is needed for photosynthesis, so therefore that is located at the top and the phloem is below. And again, look for the size of the hole to help you to identify that. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please do click the like button below and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please do check out my revision platform, www.aiqchat.com help you with your revision.